I think I people so. do choose to take offence just for the advantage in the relationship. But how do you train someone not to? I mean, you, we were talking about kids in playgrounds, right? That's mm. quite difficult, isn't it? To, to, to tell a kid to, you know, if someone makes fun out of you or, or says something rude to you, just, yeah. just stoically, in a very Gandhian sort of way, <laughs> rise above it and walk away. Walk but away. Isn't, isn't that what education is all about? Yeah, I suppose, I don't know. But it's, I'm, it's a wonderful lesson for life, though, isn't it? If a child learns that the power is in their own hands and if they can decide when to take objection to something and when not to object to something and not be responsive to somebody else. But it's hard, going, I think it's, it's hard wonderful. enough for adults, let alone to teach children that, because we find adults nowadays not being able to do the same. Yeah, without thinking, they take offence, don't exactly. they? Exactly, yeah. so <laughs> telling okay. a child. All right, well, today this is a welcome to the, a reasonable conversation for our listeners. We're talking about giving and receiving offence and political correctness. And please um, do text in 07961 387787 or phone in on the studio number 02. 0208-472-9292 and indeed Twitter at Newsound 92 FM. It's interesting what you were saying earlier about the Americans and how they're very politically correct and mm. you can't use certain terms. I was reading an article where in a nursery they couldn't just have white dolls, they had to have a black doll and a mm. kind of, you know, <laughs> yellowish looking doll as well, I guess, just so kids would all feel accepted of all races. I think that's taking yeah. it a bit too far. I'm, I'm personally think. very offended that Barbie <clears throat> is white. Are you? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> so when I was a child, we didn't really care. I think they were, you know, black Barbies and yeah. Indian Barbies, but we always wanted the white one anyway, even mm. though we weren't white. Mm -hmm. So y you think she should also be called Bobby G? <laughs> <laughs> Barbie. <laughs> That's a good business idea in there somewhere. Uh, okay, you heard it first on New Sound FM. <laughs> <laughs> but then being a child, I wouldn't be attracted to a Bobby G. I'd be more attracted to a Barbie. No, I totally agree. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah, I think this thing doesn't matter, does it really, to kids generally? You don't notice these differences? Everyone's no, you don't. Everyone, right? Well, I think if we want to try and educate children, part of educating them has to be to appreciate difference mm -hmm. and not feel threatened by it. Yeah, I Appreciate think difference and actually take delight in it. Mm -hmm. And so you should be able to see people's differences but happily accept them and, uh, and not feel vulnerable and not feel the need to put one up, put one down, etc. Yeah. The, the power politics that goes in with difference, I think, is at the heart of this giving and taking of offence. Yeah, no, I totally agree. But that's, that's to do with confidence, right? It is. It is. Self-confidence and, and, and comfort. Mm. Right, I think um, we have a few messages from our sponsors, so uh, this is a reasonable conversation. We'll be back in a few moments. See you then. And welcome back uh, to A Reasonable Conversation. We're talking about giving and receiving offence. We've got a, a flurry of texts coming in, but please do get involved, get, in, uh, get your opinion across to us. Um, Prednaji, we've had a, a couple of interesting texts, I think. Yes, we have. This is related to what we were talking about earlier, about walking away and not being offended. Mm -hmm. Ravi's messaged in. He said, walking away doesn't solve anything. Standing up and holding your ground at the very first instance is the best way to solve an issue. Then people don't think you're a pushover. And I think that's because not everyone's educated and sometimes if there's an uneducated person, you know, they're not going to stop. You know, as you were saying, you know, if mm -hmm. someone carries on and carries on, so you've got to kind of stoop to their level to solve the issue. Yeah, and then they'll you. know you're not a pushover and they'll think in the mm. future. Okay, Lovigy, thank you very much for that. And I think it is about boundaries as well, isn't it? We've talked about giving and receiving offence. And I think between people there's always a boundary. Some people are always pushing the boundary beyond where they should and others perhaps don't have their boundaries so well defined and so they often receive and take on board a lot more. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm, I'm personally totally in agreement with Raviji that uh, one shouldn't walk away. Yes. But having said that, one shouldn't feel offended. I think the feeling thing is the important thing. Yeah. I, think, I suspect it bugs a person a lot more. So if somebody's trying to offend you mm -hmm. and you're quite happy to say, oh dear, and just dismiss it without feeling offence, I, I think that's a better response to somebody who's trying to offend but you. But there is, beating them up or something. There is a time where, you know, yeah. sticks and stones can, may break my bones, but words mm. will never hurt me. But you say anything, yeah. smash your face. <laughs> then we resort exactly. to the sticks <laughs> and the stones. Because it's true though, people, if they're, you know, wary and they know you can stick up for yourself, they're yeah. not going to say anything to you in the future. Whereas yeah. if they know, you know, you're weak and you're a pushover, they'll yeah. try even harder to get at you in one day. Sure. I mean, there's all this thing with like kids committing suicide because of Facebook bullying and Absolutely. whatnot. So that you know words. And do. that's vulnerability, mm -hmm. isn't it? It's being too vulnerable to words. Whereas I think if you establish a bit more of your own personal power, yeah. then you can dismiss a, a Facebook text message and uh, <laughs> yeah, no, you know, a, a, a snide comment. So there is a, a need for people to become a little securer. Vivegi, no, we've had a text in from Ashwin saying, in India people will not pay taxes but will shower temples with gold. 
Government needs money to pay for public services. Why not start by improving public toilets? Regarding offence, there must be clarity in communications. If somebody gets offended, then as Stephen Fry said, what the... Do, do, do we have a censoring <laughs> beep? Oh, beep. <laughs> beep. <laughs> and that was from Ashwin. Uh-huh. Ashwin, thank you very much for that. I think, with um, showering temples with gold, I think that's per- people's own personal choices, but why should it just be temples that improve public services? Why can't, you know, money from other religious yeah. places be used as and well? And in India, are we counting civil servants greed as a public service no i don't I mean, think so. <laughs> i think there is a india's a whirlwind at the moment isn't it but uh, there is another aspect to this and that a lot of the social work that's done in india is actually done by temples that's many true. of the schools yeah. are temple schools a lot of the, uh, the the institutions to look after the aged they're also associated with temples and ashrams do a huge amount of humanitarian mm. work so i don't yeah. think there's anything particularly wrong in um, giving funds to organisations no, which do support not. that. Yeah, um, sure. And speaking of organisations, um, the government hasn't got a particularly good track record <laughs> for receiving funds and not um, uh, and looking after them with the, the appropriate level that's uh, due a custodian. Yeah. So, Ashwin G, thank you so much for that. I think that's fair to say. But I think Ashwin's mm-hmm. point about communications having to be clear is very important. Totally. I think it's very easy to take offence, even when someone doesn't intend to give it. Mm. Yes, that, that's also the case. Words in fact, can also uh, be construed in different ways as well. Yeah, it's, it's that exactly. power thing, isn't it? There are people who are always looking to take offence, and there are communities who have mastered the ability to be offended. <laughs> and then, yeah. in that way, they demand um, more than perhaps is reasonably due to them. Well, talking so that's about important. demanding respect, okay. mm-hmm. uh, we've had a text in from Sunny who said, the internet has brought the world closer, so I think people demand respect. And I think that's valid. There's nothing wrong with demanding respect. No, not at all. No, I think it's all, better to command you on that respect. One. Commanding respect as opposed to demanding. Yeah. Oh, totally. Yeah, we're all for that one. Show <laughs> well, I mean, I, I mean, I've seen plenty of people who go around there, you know, screaming and shouting about how they deserve respect and why is no one respecting them. And I don't think that's sure. a particularly... Oh, you've been watching, you've been watching The Lower House in the... <laughs> new, <laughs> sort of exactly, yeah, that's true, yeah. <laughs> okay. And we've got a text message from Sunil who said, In this climate, we've lost our way of how to behave with each other. The more educated we become, the more we lose the art of diplomacy. That's a very interesting, mm. very interesting wonderful, message. Wonderful, wonderful. No, this is true. I had uh, somebody send an email through a few days ago on a different subject, and they, they were saying that in the world at the moment, we have more doctors than we've ever had before, and yet people seem to be a lot iller. We have more lawyers, and yet the prisons are all full of people. Yeah. We have more um, academics and uh, educated people, and, um, and yet there is uh, strife. And we have more economists and politicians, and yet there, the whole world is in some sort of glo- global economic turmoil. So I think there is a, a little bit to be said for what um, uh, the last text has just texted in. Adding to that, joining mm. the point on about the internet, there's mm. more ways of communicating with people, but we do seem to... There's been a lot of, you know written about and studies on mm. how people seem to have lost key communication skills in this day and age because of Definitely. you know yeah. social media mobile phones and things like that and i think that's an important point as well mm, that's right uh, there's that famous comment going around on memes at the moment about einstein saying something about breeding a generation of idiots oh that's very <laughs> oh, yeah. I've Tec- that. technical, right. technological advancement is going to lead us to breed a generation of idiots mm. it's true because uh, no one really goes to see their friends anymore and spend some time with them instead they'll just you know send them a text true. message or skype or email and yeah but having said that, it, I think it's wonderful that we have listeners listening to a reasonable conversation on the old ancient method of radio broadcasting, Definitely. We've <laughs> which had, is wonderful. We've had a text in from Boonham. He said, okay. we've become very conscious of, I- uh, of our identity and hence we stand up for our rights. Yeah, that's very important. I think um, one thing that does happen when you're offended is that you suddenly realise that, hang on a moment, I need to stand up and be strong and be counted, I need to stand up for my rights, otherwise I'm not going to be uh, taken into account and taken into consideration. Well, we had this with the caste legislation, didn't we? Mm, yeah. Uh, there are times when I think that Lord Harris, when he stood up and declared that one in two Hindus is a caste racist in the UK, <laughs> did us all a great favour. I mean, it was very offensive, and the comments yeah. that they made afterwards were really offensive. But it did everyone a great favour, and they thought, hang on a minute, this is the House of Lords, and they are saying such ridiculous things, such offensive things, and it's, uh, it galvanised the community quite, quite extraordinarily. So in some ways, being offended can actually be quite good. It, I, it teach you a couple of lessons. 
Well, if you want to move the, the dialogue into a spiritual place, right, mm -hmm. spiritual teachers are known for being offensive to their students, to help their students <laughs> become a little bit stronger. Really? So it's actually a good thing? There is a... Is that, is, is that, building. I, is that the reason they give? Or do I want to tell uh, you about another... <laughs> okay, I, you know I play, uh, I do a little bit of yoga practice and yoga teaching. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you a story about one of my yoga teachers, who, when I met him, we worked for a while, and this is in India, and he said, Satish, you're, you're far too nice. He said, you're too nice, you will never make any progress in spiritual practices <laughs> until you can create a safe space around you mm -hmm. in which you can do your practices. And so he taught me a practice, and if I, if I sort of paraphrase it into an English setting, here's what he taught me. He said, fill your pockets with pound coins, go and stand in the middle of a high street somewhere, take a pound coin out and just drop it onto the pavement. Mm -hmm. And he said, what will happen is somebody, some nice person will pick it up and give it to you and they'll say, oh, you dropped this. And what you have to do is say, no, I didn't. <laughs> right? And he said, because you're not used to giving offence, right? Okay. He said, the person will know that it's your pound coin, they will know that you did drop it, and they will know that you know it, but you're still being so unpleasant. He said, and then do it again, and do it again, and do it again, until you can happily upset somebody or risk upsetting somebody. Is that giving offence? The, the other person walks away with a pound coin. <laughs> yeah, you're absolutely right. I think it's, um, it's more cost effective to do it in India. Where a, a rupee coin doesn't, oh, doesn't work. Uh, but then should we have to offend people to help ourselves grow as a person? That's a great justification. Oh, sorry, I was only just being rude to you know, try to teach you some lessons about... You know. <laughs> to help myself grow you know, yeah. spiritually. Well, I think there's something to be said. It's about boundaries, isn't it? Because unpleasant people are always imposing beyond the boundaries into other people's personal spaces. And you have to learn to be able to stand and say, sorry, no further. Draw a line in the spiritual sand or draw a line in the sand and say, I'm sorry, I'm not going to allow you to upset me. Okay. Because yeah, something quite similar happened to me. Uh -huh. I want to go into politics. Okay. And everyone said, oh, Prana, you're too, you're too nice. You won't be able to you know, hack it as a politician. So you told them to sod off. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I didn't really say that, but I just thought, you know, that's your yeah. opinion. Yeah. Well, I think I will be able to. So I don't know, maybe I should stand in the street with some pound coins and <laughs> try offending people now. <laughs> it's an incredible practice. You want to try it. it, um, it you, one of its pound coins, you learn really quickly. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I think there's, there's other ways you can, instead of dropping the pound coin in the place, mm. throw them at people. Mm. That's, that's, that's definitely taking a... <laughs> well, I'm sure that everybody has their own uh, ability to, to play around with the idea. But the idea is to... Learn that actually sometimes people take offence when it's uh, something tiny, minuscule, and yet the, the politics is such that they then are the master of that relationship. Yeah. And I because they've taken the offence. Yeah. And if you want to, to progress on a spiritual journey, you have to go against an awful lot of what society thinks mm. is normal and is acceptable. You have to put up with the criticism and the, uh, the, uh, the lack of understanding. And you can't do that if you're at everyone's beck and call trying to pre please everyone. So you have to learn not to be offended, but also to be able to push back the boundaries when it might offend somebody. Okay. What do you think of that as an idea? Interesting stuff. Okay, well, let's take that idea and put it into something that's been relatively recent and is quite current. The legislation or the demand for legislation that gay couples should be able to marry in churches. Okay. <laughs> yes, yes, right. yes, okay. Like pin drop okay. I know. Right. So we've been talking about politics of power, mm -hmm. right? Now, I think a reasonable person would say that everybody is entitled to live their own lives according to how their feelings, their desires and their hopes are. Yep, sounds with, reasonable. With yeah. certain provisos about living together. Sure, right? yeah. But if you blur the boundary, what happens when one person says, you need to accommodate me in mm -hmm. your lifestyle? I think that's wrong. I think... Okay. So uh, we have this notion of ah, a civil, of a civil relationship, yeah. right? Yeah. In, in law... Uh, I believe that a civil partnership is recognised mm -hmm. and that a gay couple can actually be recognised by the law as having uh, equal rights. Yeah, they're the yeah. same rights, mm -hmm. yeah. But there's been an insistence, hasn't there, that we want to be able to be married in your church. I think imposing... We want to be able to be married in your temples. Hmm. Okay. I think that's wrong because you shouldn't impose your viewpoint on a religious institution. And you shouldn't say that, you know, churches have to marry mm. gay couples or have to do something that they, mm. don't, yeah. they don't normally want to do. But you see, the argument that's used is that they're suffering from other people imposing their views on them by not letting them marry in the church. But which which I, I don't mm. think that's fair. I don't agree mm. with that. Mm. But that's, that's often what's said. That's the counter-argument, isn't it? Yeah. But um, that is the boundary thing, isn't it? Mm. And isn't that a, a political thing? I, I think I mentioned earlier that uh, sometimes a person who is insecure they try and fix the world 
so that their insecurity doesn't cause them offence. Whereas what they really need to be doing is fixing their insecurity, <laughs> and evolving true. as a human being, becoming a strong personality. Those things are things that we, we can do. So, the world will never be fixed. So instead of meddling in you know, their own affairs and sorting out their own house in order, they're mm. kind of trying to fix everyone else's and... Well, it's like if it's raining outside, I get an umbrella. I don't go out there and try and create a world in which rain doesn't fall on my head. 